So I might try to stall a little bit. Our second speaker has not quite gotten through traffic yet. Um, <laughs> that said, I'm going to go ahead and start. I think everybody in this audience obviously knows why, why TCG exists and what our core objectives are. But I did want to review for some of the folks that might not know all of the history um, that when, when TCG was lost in, launched in 2006, we did start as a pilot. And the pilot was to go after GBM, lung squamous, and ovarian cyst adenocarcinoma. And in 2009, we expanded, I think now as many of you know, obviously, to 20 new tumor types. And I'm going to announce again kind of a, a somewhat even broader expansion to some new rare tumor types that, that we hope to finish by the end of next year. In order to stay on our current timeline, we would like to complete all acquisition to get to 11,000 qualified cases which would account for the pilot phase of about 1,000 cases, which was our goal, and to the, the 10,000 case expansion. And as of today, we have about almost 8,000 qualifiable cases sitting at the BCR or having been shipped. So we're very close to that goal, and by the end of this year, we should hit that 8,000 out of 11,000 mark. The goals of TCGA remain the same today as they were in 2006, and that's to establish and demonstrate that team science can be an effective way to getting da large data sets out to the community, that um, the, the federal government and, and very, very talented scientists can develop a scalable pipeline that we've always stressed begins with the highest quality samples. And about 20% of the audience today are the folks that are providing those clinical um, samples that, that make this project possible. And we have representatives also here, just to kind of hint, um, from SASC Frederick who are helping us um, continue the sample acquisition phase now, that if you have samples, we still want them. So that's always going to be my bottom line. Um, we've determined, I think, that we can develop a, a large-scale parts list and make it publicly accessible. Um, and we want to do this always on uh, statistically robust sample sets, which is why TCGA attempts to go after 500 qualified cases of every diagnosis we, we, we look at, um, at least for our major tumor types. Again, the rare tumors are, are going to be an exception to that rule, and uh, we always make the data publicly available. In fact, most of our um, investigators actually upload the data to the public domain and then download it before they actually do their own analyses. So TCGA has stayed true to a no platform left behind um, strategy, which I, I know frustrates um, some, but I think still provides the most comprehensive data set uh, to the community, and therefore I think um, is really living up to its um, what, what we tried to do initially. And, and so for every tumor type, or every sample that comes in, we have an array of, of, of data that, that come out. And this is done right now through just over 150 tissue source sites all around the globe. We have tissue source sites in Pakistan, in um, Moscow, in Thailand, in Vietnam, in a new one in Colombia, um, South America, and, 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 and even all the way to Hawaii. So, so they're all over the world. We do this with six cancer uh, genomic characterization centers and the sequencing centers from NHGRI. And uh, we, we've also added these seven genome data analysis centers that um, try to provide integrated analysis and portals for the community to utilize. And of course, we have the data coordinating centers um, with SRA International that provides all non-primary uh, sequence data and CG Hub now at UCSC that provides the sequencing data to the community. Uh, while this um, is small, I wanted to make sure that at least people had it available online. This is the current TCGA research network. Um, there are some changes. Um, we've recently consolidated all samples to be uh, sent to our Columbus, Ohio Biospecimen Core resource. So Julie Gasteyer Foster is here. If you have questions about how the um, BCR works, um, all samples are now flowing uh, through a single unified pipeline at, at, at Nationwide Children's. We've added um, UCSC as a, as a data portal for our sequence data away from NCBI, and I'll go over that briefly at the end. So here, if you have a favorite tumor, you're going to want to look along the bottom of our x-axis and along the um, y, you'll see how many qualified cases have either been shipped or have um, qualified and are ready to be shipped from the BCR. Um, if it has an asterisk on top, it means we've basically closed acquisition and are only open to um, specific acquisition from African American patients or patients who would um, be racially defined as black on a, on a census form, essentially. So anywhere in the world, we, we would take your samples as long as they qual uh, qualify under that racial category. If you are in a, if your favorite tumor type is under a green uh, bar, we are actively doing analysis and or preparing a manuscript right now. 
Um, if you're in blue or even if you're in green and are on this end of the spectrum, this is where um, I, I'm bugging, you probably know me well because I've bugged you on email or on the phone or in person at your house to try to get samples out of your freezers. Um, I've yet to do that, but I'm getting very, very close. Um, so don't leave your addresses with Josh outside. Um, you'll see this, my favorite new little bar here is this gold bar for chromophobe kidney. This is our first rare tumor type that we ventured into with TCGA, the, and I'm gonna introduce this project to many in this audience today for the first time. So it, it became very clear if you looked at our sample acquisition graph with red being um, wh where samples um, were, were coming in, and this is total unqualified cases. So this is total cases coming in our door. In red is the ideal curve, so to speak, to get to a number that would get to 11,000 cases by the end of this project, and the end of this project is late summer 2014. So in order for us to get to 11,000 qualified cases by the end of by, by end of summer 2014 I have to have 11,000 qualifiable cases into Julie and her team at the Nationwide Children's BCR by December 15th 2013 so we've just over a year to collect about 5,000 more samples in order to, to hit this metric it's gonna be a very very busy year I hope for us but the reality was that when I looked at our blue line which is the sample the reality of sample acquisition with with it flattening out assuming we never collect another case it was clear that there was no way with the way sample acquisition was going that we were gonna hit ever hit or meet this this red line and so in in order to try to fill some of at least the case acquisition gap and realizing that many tumor types were still orphan in the international cancer genomics community and not being tackled, we started a rare cancer project. The first one we went after was chromophobe kidney that is now closed to accrual. Um, but chromophobe kidney uh, represents our, our first case where we have 50 qualified cases of a rare tumor. These other tumor types are currently being investigated with adrenal cortical carcinoma um, and uterine carcinosarcoma uh, acquisition, hopefully ending by the end of this year. Pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma, uh, hopefully being accrued in February and March of next year. And, and the other tumor types, hopefully, uh, being defined as we go on. That said, uh, if it hasn't been done and you have potential of 100 cases that can come in, we will add your rare tumor as long as it's, as it's a malignant tumor type. So come find me if you have a good idea. And, and I will say thymoma is one of these examples. At the last TCJ meeting, we announced this, and it was a smaller meeting, but one of our ESC members came up and was very interested in, in thymoma, and that's now on um, the potential list. So if you have a, an interest and a potential, um, we, we might be able to, to slot you in. So between the pilot and the expansion, and now I can speed up since our second speaker has arrived, um, we, we want, I wanted to kind of go over what our core data sets are uh, so that you know what to expect, because things have absolutely changed between what we did in the pilot and what we're doing today. Uh, every case now gets Affymetrix SNP6 arrays, the Infinium array, which is now the 450K array for, for methylation. Every case is, we use um, RNA-seq for both miRNA and mRNA. Every case gets a whole exome, and 10, 10 plus percent of cases get whole genomes. If there's enough residual tissue, we will do a reverse phase protein array with Gordon Mills and MD Anderson. Every case um, has minimum enrollment data, a pathology report, and an H&E from both the frozen and a diagnostic slide. So we do have several groups now that are doing genotype phenotype correlations by trying to add some uh, histopathology review on top of uh, the, the, these images and pathology reports, and those data are slowly becoming public also. So as of today, we have 7,136 cases that have been shipped and have initial biospecimen data at the DCC. Those other 900 cases-ish that, that we have in the pipeline are, are basically projected because we have them in hand, but they have not yet qualified or been shipped yet. 5,800 plus of those cases have a minimum clinical data set. So this is basic clinical data diagnosis, um, date of diagnosis, age of diagnosis, et cetera. 3,800, 3,900 have at least one year follow-up, and ha about half of those have treatment information associated. We are going after, everyone asks every meeting I go to, we are going after at least minimum of one year follow-up, additional follow-up on all patients, um, and we will go after additional um, years as funding allows. Um, so far, of those 7,100 cases, 105 samples have been shipped to our center. So from one single case, we isolate RNA and DNA from tumor and normal, and 105 samples have been shipped to our centers. 87% of those, um, 
87% of those samples have a level one data set publicly available. And we are currently hunting down with the help of Battelle and our quality management system, we are actively hunting down what has happened to those other 13,000 one by one. And the centers have just started getting emails from me asking for those data. And some of them we will never find because they're, they're, there's bad data or a bad sample, but we will at least try to account for, for where every single piece of data is. But we do have an 87% return rate, which means a, which is still fairly comprehensive. So I wanted to go over the timeline briefly in, in hopes that the community sitting in this room will help us shorten this timeline to getting the data out to the community. First and foremost, this starts with t sample procurement. Without samples, we, we can't have a project. And from first touch to first touch, meaning from first touch from the first time I talk to a tissue source site to the first time I see a sample can be anywhere from three months to two years. Some of you who have been working with me for two years and have yet to ship a sample are in this room. So um, you know um, how painful it can be to just get emails and emails and emails from me. It takes about 90 days at the BCR before we are able to ship, qualify your case and ship it out to our centers. SNP data on average rolls around about 45 days after the cases have been shipped. Methylation a little later, followed by miRNA-seq, RNA-seq, and exomes, which average about 180 days, depending on the center doing the sequencing. And then it takes us about 12 to 24 months from the time we have about half of, a, half of our data set available to get a publication into the public domain. Domain. So from first touch to first public review, you're looking at approximately five years. These are the people in the audience that hopefully you'll go talk to if you have questions about any part of our pipeline. I'm mostly responsible for tissue acquisition and the, the characterization centers. Roy Tar Tarnazer, um, Martin Ferguson, and John Demchik are responsible for um, help managing the BCR with Julie Gasteyer, as well as clinical data, et cetera. Brad Osenberger for, from the NHGRI for the sequencing centers. Lee Ming runs our um, DCC and CG hub from the program office with a, a team of folks, and I did want to recognize recognize this very special human being right here, Julia, who really did manage um, this meeting with the help of Josh Shapiro, obviously, outside. And Margie Sheth, who most of you know from running all of all 20 plus of our um, analysis working groups. Um, I'm not going to go over this slide because we're running out of time, but again, it's also actually in your book, our sample criteria, so I suggest if you're interested in what our sample criteria are, you flip to the program information pages, and I have all of our really desperately seeking tumor types list there, as well as our uh, sample criteria. And ultimately, of course, our end goal is to make sure that all of these high quality samples end up in the public domain so that one single data set, in this case, the GBM data sets, can lead to an immense amount of research. So this is every single paper that's actually used the primary GBM data set in a public, re in a public, uh, in a publication post, post release, post data release. Hopefully all of you know about the TCG data portal and getting data, the DCC um, from SRA International. Uh, the team is here today and they will be giving a workshop this afternoon. If you want to learn about their DCC 2.0, the, the revamp that should go live next year, we hope that you'll talk to them and give them some, some guidance on, on perhaps what you're looking for in terms of case studies for what our current DCC doesn't provide you, but you might want to get out of a next version. Um, we also have the team from Firehose here. This is the team from the Broad, led by Gaddy Getz and, and Linda Chin, now at MD Anderson, where we have on ongoing pipeline analysis. So these are runs of, through their um, analytical engine that provides you. So if you clicked on our breast link, for example, you'd get some information on where we are with breast cancer, and you could even get all the way down to gistic plots, et cetera. So these are almost figure level with, um, with legends, et cetera. So you can get a snapshot of any tumor type you want for the active data. We also have, um, of, of course, representatives from David Hauser's team here and Anai Systems um, who um, manage the CG Hub, which is our sequencing repository, which I think most people in the room have, have finally gotten onto. Um, but, but we have moved all of our data to the system, and they will also be running um, a workshop at, at this uh, meeting. So we hope that you guys will attend if you have any questions. I wanted to make sure also that everyone was aware that if you don't see your favorite tumor type on the TCGA list, there is a chance that the International 
National Cancer Genomics Consortium is working on your favorite tumor type. So please um, go to their website. Brett Witte actually is here from um, the ICGC Data Coordinating Center. So if you have questions, you can always hunt him down. I'm sure he'll be pleased that I just um, did that. Uh, I did not warn him. Uh, but but he, he will be here to answer questions about their project as well. I wanted to, of course, acknowledge um, very briefly before turning this over to Stephen and Lou, the team in our office, and I apologize to Greg, but um, you didn't send me a picture, man. <laughs> That's all I had. So um, here is the team from the office. Um, obviously, thanks also to my two new supervisors um, and the direct co-directors for the Center for Cancer Genomics, Stephen Chanick and Lou Stout, as well as the team um, who co-manages TCGA from NHGRI, Brad Ozenberger, Heidi Sophia, um, Lindsay Lund, and Mark Geyer. And I think we'll just come up at the end if there are any questions for all of us at the end.